Um, yeah, hi, my name is Doreen Seider and I work at the German Aerospace Center and um, I'd like to talk now about um, designing future aircraft um, like we do it um, at the German Aerospace Center and we do it there with Eclipse RCP and I'd like to share um, some experiences we made um, during the yeah, development of the software which um, supports designing future aircraft. First, what is future aircraft design all about? Um, it's about getting new aircraft configuration and there are two main targets or two main objectives. Um, the first one is that the configurations are more environment friendly and the second one is that they require less operation costs. Um, and in the end, if I say future, I mean future because we um, don't only think about the um, yeah, the normal passenger airplanes or aircraft, but we think about um, different configurations, such that ones with rounded wings or wings that go that goes in um, that go in that direction, and yeah, that's the uh, um, yeah the background for future aircraft design. And yeah, how it is performed in the end. Um, so having future aircraft design, um, a lot of experts and people are involved, scientists, engineers, and um, yeah, they have specific knowledge and every expert is required during the whole design process. And you see here, um, uh, how if I, yeah. Um, yeah, maybe a person responsible for finance or for, for, for aerodynamics or optimization and stuff. And so to perform the overall aircraft design task is it's required that all the um, people work together, they, that they collaborate. And that's exactly what we support at DLR um, by developing a software called RCE. Um, RCE stands for Remote Component Environment and it is designed to, to enable multidisciplinary collaboration, uh, collaboration um, to, help, to help in the end experts from different disciplines to work together. Yeah, just try to say it in one sentence. And we built RCE on top of Eclipse RCP. And in the end, we made it open source under the Eclipse public license. Oh yeah, and that was a kind of short teaser. And now I go to my um, main talk with a short outline first. So um, in the first few slides, I'd like to introduce RCE. How does it look like? Then I will focus on three selected aspects um, that yeah, represent our experiences we made um, during the development of, of RCE. And the first one is modularity, then usability, and last but not least, distribution management. Um, in the end, I'd like to yeah, finish with two example projects we have at DLR. Um, that we use RCE. Um, first, I think it's important that um, yeah, there's already a decision why specific technologies was chosen. And for me, there was the question why Eclipse RCP, because I was not at the team um, at the start of RCE. So I asked my boss, okay, why did we choose Eclipse RCP in 2006? And he said, uh, mainly because of OSGI, um, because OSGI provides, um, yeah, it provides a component model, and um, he thought that it sounded promising, and um, he mentioned that it is um, promising because it is standardized. And yeah, on a second note, um, he he mentioned that was that it was important that basic stuff can be reused. That means the the Eclipse RCP approach, and that we. Um, didn't need to implement everything from scratch. Um, yeah, and yeah, again, multidisciplinary design or aircraft design is all about experts, people, different people with different backgrounds. And yeah, I'd like to 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 get the link now to RCE, so you can imagine, or it is it is a fact that in the end, the knowledge is often implemented in tools. So. Group of people, group of experts um, implement tools, maybe written in Python, Fortran, or other um, languages, um, rarely in Java. And yeah, the tools are discipline specific um, and yeah, work um, standalone and, and um, 
are, are fine for the specific domain, but if we'd like to focus on the whole um, design process, then we need to link them together, to, to couple them, and to manage the, de the dependencies between the tools, because um, you can imagine that one result of one tool um, influences another tool. Um, so one output file of first tool is an input file for the second tool and so on. And then um, it is the task to execute that tool and to execute all the tools in common by considering the dependencies between each other. And a challenge is that the tools um, don't run on one server, but are distributed. That means um, no, not a single tool is distributed, but the whole, um, but, but that every tool can um, run on different sites or different locations. Maybe one in Munich, one in Hamburg, or or one in London. And that's exactly what RCE supports. So it supports the automated automated execution of tools by considering the dependencies and by exchanging data between these um, tools. Um, that's how RCE looks like, and here you see in the middle um, the coupling of the tools, here are the tools, and um, then you can um, imagine that if these tools are modeled and coupled and the engineer is done, then these um, workflow can be executed, and on the right hand side you see a list of tools available, and yeah, it can be dragged into the editor, and these tools um, don't need to be run on that local instance, but it can be run on as a RCE um, server instance. And if the tool is executed, it is important for the um, engineer or user or scientist at the end that the results are available, and it is important for us that the results are available, available locally, um, even if the workflow execution is then um, distributed. So here you see the standard out, standard error of the tools, and here you see the data results or the visualization of a aircraft configuration. Um, yeah, now I'd like to come to the three selected aspects um, I'd like to share. And the first one is modularity. Um, as I said, RCE supports the, the collaboration of um, experts and and disciplines, and it allows the coupling of distributed tools. And for us, it is important that the coupling is not, um, or yeah, the other way around, that the coupling can be done ad hoc. That means if I'm an engineer, I'd like to, I have a tool um, implemented, and it's pretty new. I don't like to ask the IT manager to install it on the server side, but just provide it for another colleague. And so RCE um, enables the ad hoc distribution of tools. Um, that means if design tools are integrated in RCE, um, we um, like to have them immediately integrated and immediately um, provided to others. And these are some key aspects of OSGI. The first one is that we can integrate something in RCE. So we have um, modules and that these modules are, dyna are dynamic. That's, that means they, come, they can come and then can, uh, they can go. Um, and OSGI itself is defined yeah, in one sentence here as a set of um, specifications that define a dynamic component system for Java and the key aspects of OSGI are so-called OSGI services, um, which provide functionality of one module. And explanation, what I mean that it helps us OSGI to provide these ad hoc um, collaboration is um, that a tool, if it is integrated in RCE, it is simply immediately because OSGI is dynamic, registered as an OSGI service. And um, that means if it is registered as an OSGI service, it can be provided to others and a colleague in another town can use it and can see it. And the other way around, if I um, remove it from RCE, the OSGI service get unregistered and so the tool is immediately gone. And um, that means, in, on the other hand, that the OSGI service registry, which is responsible for the registering, registration and unregistration unre for tools um, serves as a kind of aircraft design tool registry for us and we um, didn't need to implement anything of these dynamic, um, of these dynamic um, registration stuff. Um, the second aspect is um, usability um, and experiences we made um, 
here with us Eclipse RCP. And I know there are a lot of usability discussion going on regarding Eclipse RCP or the Eclipse IDE in comparison to, to, to other IDEs. But um, for us, I can say that the rich client platform, the Eclipse rich client platform, um, helps us to make RCE um, more usable because we were able to adapt um, usability decisions made in the past in Eclipse or in Eclipse RCP. And so that enabled um, us to, ha to have a um, more consistent user interface because we are a small team, five people, and do not have a spe um, a UX or usability um, engineer. And so it is good to have a framework that is already there. And we see, OK, a graphical user in interface looks like that there. Then we can implement our own view um, very similar to that. And so it's a very consistent view. Um, but if I talk to, uh, or if we talk about usability, it's always important to know who uses RCE. So, or who uses the software, in our case here, RCE. And RCE is used by scientists and aerospace engineers mainly. And these persons are um, no developers or no software developers, but they develop software. So they develop scripts and so on, often large scripts in the end. But if you ask them, they say, no, I'm not a software developer. I'm a scientist or I'm an engineer. But in the end, they are very, um, yeah, they develop very often software. Um, from my point of view, they are often smart and love their work. They are very um, motivated. And yeah, it's <laughs> they're wearing um, suits and at conferences and workshops. So um, that was a surprise at the beginning for me because I feel always underdressed there. Um, um, so, but um, yeah, in the meantime, I get used to it and I'm the person <laughs> who is who's not dressed at, at, at the others. Um, and yeah, what, what, what can I say about usability experiences? Um, I can say that we can divide our users in Eclipse IDE users and non-Eclipse IDE users because Eclipse IDE users yeah, know the concepts. Um, from Eclipse and others um, yeah, don't know it. And if they don't know it, they often get confused about things we didn't expect. Um, two examples for that. Um, one is the um, perspective concept of Eclipse. Um, Eclipse IDE users like it because it's powerful, but non-Eclipse IDE users um, often get confused um, because they rearrange views or close views and, and, and don't know how to set it up again. And they are very happy if, if we tell them there's a reset button for a perspective. Um, and that's not a good thing if, if, it's, um, if they are so happy to know what does the reset um, function about. Um, maybe in the end it's a question of training courses, but I think usability is not um, good if training courses are, um, regarding, are needed regarding the main usability um, concept. So our approach here was that we reduce the perspective um, to exactly one and we open all views at default. So we reduced the, um, yeah, the feature set of, of Eclipse here, but um, yeah, it worked out better. And the other example is the project-based concept of Eclipse. Um, so as I introduced the workflow concept, or as we call it workflow, um, where the tools are coupled together, um, in the end, they are stored in um, files, workflow files. And what we use um, is because we don't like to in implement graphical user face interfaces ourselves, if we don't need to, is um, that we store these files in the Project Explorer or that we provide the files to the user in the Project Explorer. And non-Eclipse IDE users get lost if they like to create a new workflow for the first time and they are required to create a new project first and then create a new workflow in that project. Um, if we just use the um, standard Eclipse um, approach for that. So what we did is that we conducted here a user study um, within a master thesis and yeah, we'd like to know, okay, is it, is it a real problem or, or is it um, yeah, just a problem of a few person and we gave them the task to create a new workflow and it's, yeah, it was very interesting, sometimes a bit funny, but um, in the end very helpful um, to see what, what the people are doing and the result was that and at that point we implemented our, yeah, GUI element ourselves. So we have a dedicated workflow wizard, um, workflow creation wizard, which hides the work project um, creation under the hood. And um, 
yeah, so the user just say, okay, that's a workflow name, and, and that's it, and in the end, he has a project, but um, that, that's okay in the end, but he doesn't need to um, create it um, beforehand. Um, yeah, the third point is um, that we currently we are managing different distributions with RCE. So why do we do it? Um, first, I introduce RCE um, with the aircraft design approach. That means um, we have aircraft design tools in RCE integrated and then we um, do an overall design task, but we have also other tools um, integrated and then we are in other disciplines, for example the transport discipline here or even the casting in this industry. Um, here um, our blades, turbine blades are um, casted and with RCE we are able to um, optimize the whole process, aerodynamics, structures um, and, and even the casting characteristics. So in the end, it is not feasible to have a very cool blade with a very thin edge, but you can cast it in the end. So we have a whole optimization loop in RCE, which considers the casting characteristics at, as well. But in the end, that means that we have different features in RCE and um, that doesn't fit to all users. So what we set it up is that we um, have different distributions to provide each user group with a minimalist um, yeah, set of features. And for that we use the Eclipse um, distribution management or the um, yeah, distribution approach as a guideline, but yeah, we didn't set, any release, uh, set up any release time because yeah, it's, it wouldn't fit for us as a small team. Um, so how does it look like? We have the Eclipse platform um, at, the top, at the bottom, then the RCE core layer, that means all the code this is which is shared by all distributions and then we have three distributions currently and an RCE standard it's a um, minimum version and then for CPEX it is um, for, for the transport sector uh, for the um, aeronautic sector and then RCE for transport for the transport sector and yeah it looks nice and so okay it's so, a so very nice um, layer and we can cut the things and, 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 and we have minimalist um, distributions to the end user and what we use as a technology behind that is that we use heavily the P2 infrastructure for that. And that's very helpful, or that was very helpful, um, to compose such distributions which share the common code base, the RCE core layer, and um, which provide uh, the built-in update mechanism to end users without um, implementing any line of code from our side. Um, and we built the whole process with Tyco, the Maven plugins. But I can say that setting up all the stuff was a process. So in the end, we'd like to have what we have now is that we click on a button and um, all of the free distributions are, are built automatically with Jenkins. But um, to get there, it was, it was hard and um, it was a, yeah, a small project behind or next to the main project. Um, so a colleague of mine, Robert, um, had a talk at EclipseCon Europe two years ago, I think, about only about the distribution and build up, uh, building process, uh, build process, yeah. Okay, um, yeah, there are the um, three aspects, and now I'd like to um, demonstrate a bit about um, how we use it in, in DLR. Um, the first project I'd like to introduce is Frix. Uh, yeah, um, I like the name. Um, and it, is, it stands for Future Enhanced Aircraft Configurations. <laughs> a bit um, artificially, I think, that they, they get the name in the end, but that's another point. Um, yeah, and the main goal is here to evaluate new aircraft configurations, such as that um, blended wing body, where the, um, um, yeah, where the wing is, 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 the, is a kind of the whole fuselage or the whole body. Um, and here we like to, to um, focus more on uncertainties because um, if here's a workflow from the previous project and um, if you think, okay, this project run for days or for four for weeks, um, how reliable are the results is a very good question in the end. And so we will like to focus on that point and um, yeah, we'll consider the uncertainties regarding each tool and maybe in the end they are added or multiplied. I don't know yet. Um, another project that is um, more from the space sector, but it's yeah, 
maybe one thing between two sectors, it's called Thermas. And you see this baseliner I showed um, at the speaker's pitches. Um, and the space liner is a yeah, innovative concept between aviation and space travel um, to get ultra fast passengers at transport. And yeah, here's um, the vision of, 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 of the people um, doing that, that we can get from Europe to Australia in 90 minutes. And what we do with RCE here is again, we have a workflow, different tools integrated with different disciplines. Um, and we optimize the thermal protection system of the space liner because it has a kind of um, atmospheric re-entry um, near to the destination um, point um, in Australia or wherever. Okay, um, now I come to my summary um, of my talk. And first I, I can say that Eclipse RCP or the Eclipse RCP RCP approach helps us significantly to, to design um, future aircraft, um, especially because of these three points that the underlying OSGI, the underlying component model, um, helps us to integrate the external tools um, because that's a key concept that RCE doesn't provide any simulation stuff, but you can integrate um, design and, and the simulation tools. Um, that also, al also Eclipse RCP enforces um, from my point of view, RCE to get more usable in the end because of the existing concepts we can, um, we could adapt it. And yeah, because of its extensible character, um, the P2 tools and um, yeah, the Maven Tyco tools, which allows um, or which allowed us to um, build automatically different distributions. Um, but I can also say that not all that not all good concepts from the software engineering field can be um, yeah, adapted for scientists and engineers. But for me, it's, it's, it's okay and it's fine because um, that makes developing RCE in the end um, so interesting. So, yeah, that's it. So if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer some of them. Thank you. <laughs>